Hey YouTube, my name is Jeff and welcome to episode 4 of the RetroPie Arcade Project miniseries. In the previous episode, I test fit the Raspberry Pi and Pygolo into the case, and it turned out that it fit perfectly. Now that the assembled Raspberry Pi and Pyglo fit perfectly into the case, it's time to start getting the Raspberry Pi ready for use with the RetroPie software. I have already run through the basic setup and gotten a microSD card all set up for my own personal setup, but I will be running through the basic setup instructions to get your own RetroPie arcade machine up and running. You will first need a Raspberry Pi. In my case, I purchased the Model B+, as it's new and has more features over the original Model B. And you can watch my full unboxing of the Pi and Pi Glow at the link above. You will then need a USB keyboard for the initial setup, and also an HDMI cable, Ethernet cable, or a Wi-Fi adapter, and finally a micro USB power cable to get the Pi up and running. I would recommend purchasing a USB controller to improve the playability of your games later on, but for now, a USB keyboard will work. First, you will need to download the RetroPie Project SD card image, which you can find at the link below. After the RetroPie image downloads, you then need to mount it onto your SD card for the installation to the Raspberry Pi. There are a couple ways to do this, however, I suggest using Win32 Disk Imager, or the RPI SD card builder if you're on Mac. Once your SD card has the RetroPie installation mounted, it's time to pop it into the Raspberry Pi. Plug in the power to your Raspberry Pi and wait for it to boot up. After a short boot up time, the Raspberry Pi will present you with the Emulation Station Controller Setup Prompt. But before you do this, press the F4 key to finish the setup. This will bring you to the Linux terminal where you can start entering commands directly. If you happen to notice that the screen resolution is rather poor, you can follow the link above to get it working properly. For now, enter the command sudo raspi-config to enter the configuration menu. From here, hit enter on the first option, expand file system, and wait for it to finish. Once that is done, go to the internalization options and run through the setup for your keyboard, location, and time zone. Once you're finished customizing the Pi for your use, open up the advanced options. In this screen, you will need to open up the memory split option and change the value to either 192 or leave it at the 256 value to give the GPU more RAM when running emulators. Before you leave the advanced options, you can enable the SSH option if you plan to transfer games wirelessly. This option can be useful if you don't want to take your Raspberry Pi out of the case and connect the SD card to your computer each time you want to add more games. Once you're done customizing the Raspberry Pi for your use, go back to the first menu and select finish, and then wait for the Raspberry Pi to reboot. Once the reboot is finished, you'll be prompted again to set up your controller with Emulation Station. You can do this at any time if you need to change your controller by going into the Emulation Station settings and customizing the controls. Now that the RetroPie installation is properly set up, you can get right to uploading your own ROMs to the Raspberry Pi and start emulating your favorite retro games. I will be posting all the links you need to get started to make your own RetroPie arcade box in the description below. Be sure to stay tuned for the final episode, where I will be showing off the completed RetroPie arcade console with its 3D printed case and Pi Moroni Pi Glow. I will also be playing some of my personal favorite retro games to show off the setup in action. Thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome 3D modeling and printing videos.